All right, happy Tuesday. Hey, welcome Intermedia Partners. Uh, my name is Craig Woods. Uh, I'm responsible for product marketing for our exchange in 365 and related products. And I'm joined today by Alex Smith, who is one of our security gurus. Uh, he leads the product uh, team around developing uh, and proposing and managing the security products, actually across a lot of Intermedia services, but especially around Exchange and 365 for some of the um, security email protection options that we're going to talk about today. So very happy to have his help. Um, you know, we've set up a week of events uh, that I'm going to go through, but thanks, thanks for joining us today. This is a special program for Intermedia Partners. Everybody who uh, has registered is going to get a copy and a recording, the recording of what we're going to go through today. Um, and we're also going to be providing some pretty complete lists of, of assets uh, that will include the things that Alex and I are going are, are to reference. We'd really love to get your feedback during the session. We'll be, you know, of course, looking for the emojis. That's fine. But we'll be paying particular attention to Q to quest, to Q and A and to questions that you enter. So please enter them uh, using the enter the, the question facility at the top of the screen. And we'll try to address questions as we go along. Uh, we'll try to have some time at the end and we'll definitely be, be following up. Um, you know, please uh, let us know if you encounter any issues as, as we're going along. This is part of a program that we've set up this week for intermediate partners around Exchange and, 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 uh, and 365. Uh, and what we're trying to do is cover different topics in a very concise format that we think are extremely important for our, for our partners. So we have a short, but I think very jam-packed session today around security. We have a session tomorrow around the decision tree, how to, how to pick the right exchange and 365 options, and we'll go through a refresh on what's available and how they work. Um, on Thursday, we're going to go through the add-ons that are relevant, and we'll talk about uh, archiving, encryption, uh, um, secure sync and voice services to complement 365 and Exchange. And then on Friday, we're going to spend some time specifically talking about Teams, which we could talk about, you know, in the context of a lot of these things, but it's got enough interest and it's, it's special enough. We're going to devote Friday session to talking about the ins and outs of, of Teams. So, um, thanks for joining us today. You know, please, if you're interested in these others, we'd love to have you there as well. Uh, we're trying to break this into consumable pieces uh, and bring you know the best experts in the company in in today, which you know today means uh, today means Alex. So I'm going to kick it off by talking about some threats that we want to make sure that you're aware of, and then Alex is going to go through the basics of protection and using the intermediate security features. Then he's going to talk about a new beta program that we're especially interested and getting your participation in. And then I'll wrap with the assets uh, that we're going to that we've put together for you uh, and that we'll be providing providing you with and then uh, hopefully some time for a Q&A session. So pretty jam-packed program. We want to try to get through this in 30 minutes. The first thing that we want to, to flag is we're trying to provide our, our partners and our customers, but our partners with insights about things that are going on that are especially relevant to them. And there's a new one that's coming out in a blog uh, today uh, that's a threat that our security team has been very focused on that the F that um, is the subject of a specific FBI and, uh, uh, and, and CISA warning. And this is targeting remote workers and, and new hires. Um, and it's particularly insidious because it kind of breaks the mold from traditional attacks. It combines calling with emails and, uh, and, and, phishing web, and phishing sites. You know, the context for this is there's been a huge increase in, in attacks and cyber attacks this year over last year. And what is happening is, you know, attackers are specifically going after remote work uh, and COVID-related threats to use this as an opportunity to, of, of distraction and to come up with topics that they think are likely to get clicks. Uh, and they're leveraging this in ways that are, that are really, uh, really dangerous. This particular type of attack is designed to go after new hires, uh, particularly in a re remote work environment. And it starts with a spoofed phone call that looks like it's coming from either the IT department or somebody within the company. Uh, and they're actually getting access to employees' mobile phone numbers. And, and I'll talk about how this is happening. But it's all based on social engineering. 
So what it means is they're using posts by, by, by folks at a company who are announcing that they are now starting uh, and, they're, and they're leveraging this to come at, after them uh, as somebody who's going to help them from internally set up their access to corporate systems. So they pose as, as IT or support um, and they notify the, 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 the target that they're going to help them set up their VPN, their new secure VPN access to their corporate credentials, using the corporate credentials to corporate systems. And all that they need to do is to log into this site uh, to enter their credentials, and then that'll enable their VPN access. Obviously, you know, this is a way for the attackers to get the hold of the credentials, and then they exploit those against the company. So this actually has taken a, a number of forms. This is the same mode that was used to attack Twitter, uh, but we're seeing this more broadly used to attack companies that are doing remote work uh, and where their employees are posting details that can be scraped from social media sites like, link, like LinkedIn and other places and can then be used in as, a, as an attack. So, you know, we want our partners to be aware of this, that you can be sure and uh, provide the same guidance that, that we're providing to our, to our other customers, which is, you know, new employees, companies should be very aware uh, about what their employees are posting on social media because that is creating uh, th that's that's creating the opportunity for 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 the attack so our general recommendation is do not post news about you know joining a company uh, in any timely fashion that, that can be used you know this this follows the same guidance that we've traditionally provided um, and I'll talk about this in the context of, of some of the assets for anti-phishing defense you know, the same principles apply, even though they're using some new ways to do this. They're trying to pose as someone who is either trustworthy or not suspicious. You know, they're presenting this as something that is urgent and important because you want access. We're gonna, I'm going to provide you with secure access to your corporate systems as you're getting started. Um, you know, I'll help make sure that this is done quickly. And then they're asking them to do something specific like open an attachment, go to a site, um, which should appear suspicious, but we need to make sure that they're that it's flagged for them. And, and then in this case, what they're trying to do is steal credentials. So um, this is the subject of a blog um, that references the FBI warning and summarizes this. I'll provide this to everybody who's, re who's registered, um, but this is a new variant on the same kinds of things that, that we've seen. Uh, and it's something that our security team has, has flagged for us that they wanna make sure that our partners are aware of. Okay, so. Very specific type, kind of attack following very general principles. And so with that, I'd like to introduce Alex Smith, who's going to talk about the, secure, the kinds of security settings that you should be taking advantage of with intermediate services. <clears throat> Thank you, Craig. Yes, I will. So um, I'm going to take you through some of the uh, easier, I suppose, settings that you can enable for your customers to keep them secure. Um, but as well as that, there are a number of capabilities of our platform that we've added. Um, I just want to make you aware of those. Um, and one of them is, uh, we call it compromised password detection or, or compromised password notifications. But the goal of this is to encourage safe password practices or safe password choice by users. So there are a number of times on our platform where users are going to be asked to choose a password, uh, whether it's because they've forgotten it or it's expired. Um, or even administrators um, or you guys partners setting up new accounts. So uh, at each of those uh, interactions, uh, points in time, we uh, have implemented some technology. It links into the Have I Been Pwned um, website, quite a famous website containing billions of previously known compromised passwords. So this site has a huge treasure trove. It scours the dark web and all the places that the bad guys go to build up their, um, their password databases for brute force attacking. So when a user or an administrator attempts to choose a password, we will immediately in real time check that against that database. Uh, and then if there is a match, we will warn the user or the administrator at that time that they should choose a separate password. So it's all around kind of good practice, I suppose, and good safe password choice practice. Uh, we've had this for a while now, um, well over a year, I believe, uh, but we're following up with this to provide controls 
that the administrator can enable that will enforce safe password choice. So previously, we implemented this purely as a kind of notification, similar to a password strength meter, I suppose. Um, but we're actually going to allow admins to impose those restrictions so that as well as having password complexity or length uh, rules, you can also apply and enforce the compromised password policy as well at the same point. So where a user, wherever a user might then you know, select a password, it will actually stop them and they say, you know, you cannot choose, please select another one. So it's kind of building on top and that's coming uh, in, in the next couple of months. Uh, as well as that, as well as kind of trying to keep the bad guys out of the accounts, there, you know, security always about strength in depth and layers of defense. Um, one thing that we've actually added as well, and this is relevant to partners, you should have received a notification, I think back in July about this one, is that we now automatically notify you if there has been any suspicious email forwarding rules created on any of your uh, customer accounts. So the benefit here, I suppose, is that this is a um, an, an indicator of compromise, as they say. Uh, we only alert if the forwarding rule forwards messages outside of the account. So, you know, if there's a more legitimate, I suppose, internal forwarding rule, um, that, won't, uh, that won't alert. But as partners, you will receive these mail forwarding alerts on behalf of your customers. So uh, we encourage you to look out for these. Should you receive one of these alerts, um, take some action, you know, go and investigate it. Uh, if you're unsure, just immediately reset the password of that user's mailbox. Um, we do provide you with an amount of metadata there in the email, uh, an amount of information within the notification. So perhaps you'll know whether it's legitimate or not. Follow up with that user, you know, understand whether that was something they intended to do. Um, and if it was unintended, absolutely take action. And the action to take is in that notification. Uh, so hopefully you guys don't ever see any of those, but uh, if you do, uh, you know what to do. So also many of the attack uh, vectors, I suppose, or threats come in over email. So uh, Craig's mentioned, you know, these hybrid style of attacks, but very often we're seeing a huge uptick in phishing campaigns, be they broad phishing campaigns, targeting thousands of people or, or more specific uh, targeted campaigns. Um, I'm gonna talk a little bit about both, but uh, in the context of our email protection product, um, so hopefully you'll be aware that we have an email protection solution available with all of our mailboxes. Um, this solution is available for our hosted exchange offering and also Office 365 as well. Um, and this is a uh, what's known as a gateway style solution. So this will inspect messages as they arrive uh, or before they arrive within a mailbox. And then using a number of different vendor and partner technologies that we have, uh, it makes an assessment of that email, gives it a score, and then applies an action based on a policy. Uh, but we also do that on outbound as well. So uh, as some of you may be aware, the outbound scanning is something that we have in a higher tier package. Uh, that is something that we're going to be moving down. So outbound scanning will become uh, a more ubiquitous offering available with uh, all of the packages that you partners will have access to. So just want to call that out there. Um, Going a bit deeper into email protection and what it can cover, it has some capability that we really want to encourage enabling more use of. Um, for some of our customers that are direct to intermedia, we've even gone so far as automatically enabling these features. Um, we've changed the default so that many of them do get automatically enabled for new accounts, but for any partners who've been with us for longer than um, longer than four or five months, I believe, some of these settings will just be off. Um, we do plan eventually to go through and start changing some of these settings where we feel that they are um, very low impact, but very high gain, I suppose. So I'm calling two of them out specifically here. The first is URL protection. So um, we refer to this internally, I suppose, as link safe, but for our partners, this is the URL protection capability. This is what really provides a high level of protection against uh, phishing links or any kind of malicious link within an email itself. So the solution automatically rewrites emails as they arrive or, or pass through our gateway solution. Uh, and what that means is when a user clicks on it, it gives us an opportunity to check the reputation of that uh, page before the user is directed to it. 
Now, there are a number of extra settings you can enable, one of which is what we call live scanning. Live scanning does more than just check the reputation of the page. It actually goes out and performs a real-time scan of that page before the user is um, directed to that page. Uh, if the page is safe, you can then automatically forward the user onto that page. And if there's some kind of threat, then you can choose as an admin whether the users can proceed or not. Um, one thing I will mention as well as it relates to live scanning is that we're, um, we're making a number of improvements to LinkSafe in general, in fact. Uh, we're adding some additional uh, security vendors into the mix to keep up and keep pace um, and improve our uh, detection rates. Um, but we are also going to redesign some of the end user pages. So through feedback and through general um, market movements, I suppose, we've determined that some of the messaging on those pages could perhaps be more clear. Uh, so we are going through a process of uh, just, just rebranding, re-messaging uh, what users see to make it more clear how they should act uh, or react when they see certain things according to uh, the, the URL protection program. So they'll be rolling out hopefully in, in the coming uh, weeks or potentially next few, uh, month at latest, I believe. So absolutely go in, enable URL protection. If you have sites that you don't wish to be um, enabled for URL protection, you can bypass that with by adding safe URLs. Or if you have senders that you don't want to have the URLs uh, rewritten, you can also add them to the safe sender list to bypass URL protection as well. So, you know, the vast majority um, of links are perfectly OK to rewrite. Um, I've heard that some people are concerned that this can break links and emails. In rare circumstances, it can. Um, but typically, you can just through a bit of configuration, uh, enable this safely and then bypass the safe URLs that you know are absolutely no threat to you or your customers' users. Um, as well as URL protection, we have a set of phishing, um, very discrete, specific phishing checks. They're available in the phishing tag uh, tab. Um, by and large, all of these are very safe to enable, um, and you can decide how those checks um, react to, or at least how the email is delivered, the actions that are taken when these checks are triggered. Um, and we have a number. You can delete the message. You can just alert on the message um, and apply tags. Specifically to this, though, I want to move on to the next capability that we rolled out because it relates, I think, quite strongly. Um, again, some people are concerned about enabling uh, things like the phishing checks if they believe it's going to block emails or if it's going to have some kind of negative consequence on their users. Well, to that, I say enable it first with a very um, light policy. In other words, to tag the message first. So the user still receives it, but they're given some kind of identifier that one of these checks um, has, has applied to it. Now, previously, we only allowed you to have one tag. That was a possible phishing tag. We've now changed that, and we've launched our custom subject and body tags. Now, this does two things. This applies to all of the checks in email protection. So it doesn't matter if it's spam, marketing, uh, whether it's uh, possible phishing, SPF failures, all these different checks that we perform. You can now customize the subject tags but perhaps more interestingly, you can now apply body tags. Now, body tags have a number of benefits. Um, subject tags, by and large, are ignored. Uh, in some situations, they're not displayed by some email clients. Uh, Outlook Web Access, for example, can sometimes, uh, or in certain circumstances, not display the tags. Whereas a body tag will always be shown because it's actually added to the body of the email. So that's one advantage. Uh, the main one, though, in my opinion, is the um, cybersecurity education element that comes with a body tag. You can be far more descriptive to the end user as to what the threat is and how they should act or react to that threat. So it's providing that education element right at the point that it's the most beneficial. So you can, you can and should, we encourage you to educate your, um, your customers and their users uh, about general threats, how to read them. Some of those things Craig mentioned before, you know, is this is this threat trying to get me to do something? Does it have urgency? Is it from somebody I know? Um, however, you can now also apply education directly within the emails with body tagging. Uh, you have full customization over the texts of these tags and also the background color you can change uh, to indicate urgency or otherwise.
So one thing I do want to introduce, this is a bit of a kind of hot off the press item, uh, a new feature that we're rolling out. We're calling it the AI Guardian. Now, everything I've described in all of these checks before, um, they apply at the gateway level. I mentioned before, email protection as a service is a gateway email protection solution. We're now changing it up with AI Guardian. Um, and AI Guardian, Guardian is very unique in how and where it applies its technology. So it is able to detect a number of uh, different new attacks due to the way that it works. So at a very high level, it's integrated directly into the mailbox itself. So previously, the messages were flowing through the gateway, being delivered to the mailbox, at which point, aside from LinkSafe or URL protection, there was very little we could do if that me message was subsequently determined to be um, malicious in some way. AI Guardian is constantly monitoring the mailboxes and looking for threats within the mailboxes themselves. So it does that using a combination of uh, very new capabilities. Uh, it utilizes a number of new techniques that I'll talk about shortly. Um, but really, it gives it the ability to, to detect a number of um, attack vectors or threats, specifically things like business email compromise attacks, where there's no link in the email, there's no payload in the attachment. It's actually quite difficult for email security solutions to deal with those. Um, so uh, the AI Guardian capability will provide a much higher level of attack uh, protection against those attacks, um, but also attacks that occur within an organization. So the way our gateway is currently deployed, messages between a customer's tenant in our world or within their organization do not go through any kind of email scanning. Um, this is changing with AR Guardian because it applies the protection at the mailbox level. Should a mailbox be compromised and then they try to laterally move to another mailbox, AI Guardian will be scanning constantly the threats within both mailboxes to determine if one looks like it's been compromised and is perhaps trying to compromise another. All of that can be detected by AI Guardian. Uh, it can also take um, different remediation actions. Uh, either manually, um, you'll be able to uh, go into a dashboard, look at all of the attacks, and manually remediate those uh, attacks. But perhaps more importantly, it can automatically remediate the attacks. And that might be uh, tagging the email, applying a body tag, something like that. But it can go further, and it can also potentially alert an administrator send a message to the quarantine, or of course, delete the message, which will actually pull it out of the mailbox completely. Um, so a lot of more kind of aggressive uh, protection that's applied directly into the mailbox. So I just want to quickly take a note on some of those uh, advanced techniques that AI Guardian uses. Uh, when you first enable it, it goes back and scans the last six months or more of history for that specific mailbox. And it builds up um, AI models or machine learning models for, for these individual mailboxes. So it knows who's talking to who, what's a regular pattern of communication for this particular mailbox, and it builds statistical models based on that information. So because of that, it knows whether you, know, you are receiving a message that purports to be from somebody that actually it isn't because you know, it doesn't match or various you know, underlying triggers or checks don't match. So if things look suspicious, um, it can alert and take action on those. It also applies machine learning models to do and achieve much the same, but it even applies natural language understanding. So it reads the email and looks for a lot of those um, attack vectors around, you know, some, some kind of spoofing, but perhaps urgency, some call to action, um, you know, financial information, um, I don't know, a banking code, for example social security numbers, any of these things that can uh, appear or even a request for those things um, and protect you against that. So some pretty advanced capability. We're really excited to bring it to you and to your customers. Um, and here is where we need your help. So this is a solution that we are trialing now. Uh, we have been um, proving this out for probably the last six months or so, I would say. Uh, we're at the point now where we want to start delivering this to customers but we do want to go through a uh, beta test phase. Uh, and for that, we'd love your help and assistance. So we're gonna have two levels of protection with AI Guardian, a more basic package uh, that will be included with all of the email protection packages. And then there'll be a more advanced package or a more premium package uh, that, that's uh, gonna come with you know, uh, added tiers, I suppose. 
Uh, right now, we want to beta test the basic package, and then next month, we're going to move into beta tests for the advanced package, where you'll also get access to that threat console that I referred to as well. So if you are interested in that, we encourage you to contact your partner manager. Um, and Craig, I think we're heading back to you. Yep. Hey, thanks, Alex. <clears throat> so, you know, we're super excited about the new AI Guardian capabilities that are coming. Um, but at the same time, you know, we're very mindful that overall attack volumes are significantly up. You know, one report that I cited uh, had measured a 700% 7x increase over last year. So it's never been more important to make sure that your clients, that your customers are protected. So we try to make that as, as straightforward as possible. So uh, we're going to be sending you links to the security toolkit. Those include videos by Alex and other product specialists around how to turn the right features on. It also includes templates that you can send to and share with customers. For example, we've got a piece about the, the the, the top nine things that a user should do to protect themselves. And you can, we have this in a form that you can customize. Uh, and we also accompany that with an email that you can send to, to your customers, users about why this is important and, and how to use it. We have the same approach with turning features on. We show you how, but then we also provide templates for email messages that, that you can send. Uh, so we wanna make this as easy and, and straightforward as, as possible. So with the remaining time, you know, we'd love to get your feedback on today's uh, sessions, on today's session. Uh, and if there are specific topics or questions that you've got, we want to try to, we want to try to cover those. I also want to flag a couple things. If you're interested in the beta and we'd love to have your help, uh, you know, we, we said contact your partner account manager, but also please use the chat today to tell us if you're interested so that we can follow up with you and your and your partner account manager. Um, I want to flag the other sessions this week. We're going to be going over three, Office 365 and Exchange uh, and the right plan options and how to guide your customer to the right solution uh, tomorrow. We're going On Thursday, we're going to be talking about the add-ons from archiving, secure sync, and voice to Exchange and 365 environments. And then on Friday, we're going to be talking specifically about Teams. We had a lot of questions and interest in Teams, so we're going to spend time spe specifically uh, specifically on that. Um, so uh, in, in the meantime, you know, we'd love to have your, your feedback. I see if I see somebody flagging AI Guardian. That's awesome. We'll follow, we'll follow up with you. Um, if there are other questions that you've got to today, and again, very interested in feedback. We want to make these sessions as productive as possible. We've tried to cram a lot of material in. Love to get your feedback on on today's session, either in the in the chat or or in the Q and A. Um, and so, Alex, I think the only question that we've gotten so far has just been a flag about interest in the beta beta for or beta for AI Guardian, which which is awesome. Um, uh, you know, the reason that we're doing this is because not just the volume of attacks are increasing, but also the types of attacks are much harder for traditional solutions that rely on signatures for known malware, known bad sites. So, Alex, I see a question in there about um, avoiding breaking uh, crypto signatures with body tags and, and link protection. And um, while well, you're going to refer that, yeah, everybody who registered is going to get a copy of today's webinar. We're actually going to package it up because we're going through these four sessions. So you'll get it at the end of the series. But yes, you'll get a recording of, of today's session with all of the relevant assets. Okay. Sorry, Alex. I need you. Yeah. Okay. So just quickly on that, as it relates to crypto signatures, if you're referring to something like a DKIM, a DKIM signature on an inbound message, um, well, the short answer is that we will verify the signature um, of the message prior to applying the tag. So basically the tagging, you know, the message modification happens after uh, we do all of our signature on the inbound mail flow. So, um, yep, there's no, you know, that's just a kind of um, order of operations, I suppose, that we make sure we get right. Okay. 
Well, hey, we're at the top of the half hour, uh, if you will. So thanks for thanks for attending. Again, please uh, uh, come to the other sessions if we're covering things that you're interested in. Uh, tomorrow, you know, each of these are set up as pretty quick 30-minute sessions with, with product experts for each area. And again, you know, love to get your feedback uh, on these and on other topics that you'd like us to go through. So thanks for coming today. Thanks for attending. And everybody will be getting a copy of today's uh, present presentation. I'll hang on for a minute because I see another question coming in. Um, if we're not able to follow up live with, with questions, we'll follow up af afterwards. Um, and yeah, great. Another and more interest in the beta. So uh, with that, thank you for attending. Look forward to seeing you at the other sessions. Thank you, Alex. Another Thank great, uh, great session. You know, security is really, really important to us and to our partners. Who, you know, protecting your your customers protects your own business, and we want to make sure that you're uh, using uh, everything that we've got to help. So, thank you. All right.